why I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, said the late American poet and author Maya Angelou. We hope our words have always made you feel better. This week, it's all about young love, complex relationships, hope and music. I'm Atika Faruqi and here are the headlines. It did wonders for a young Shahid Kapoor. 21 years later, a bunch of Gen Z actors are struck by Ishq Wish Rebound. Prateek Gandhi does it one more time in the role of a desperate common man in his film Deir Bigha Zameen. A blockbuster horror comedy from the South. We chatted with Aramnai Four's leading ladies, Tamanna Bhatia, Rashi Khanna and producer Khushbu Sundar. And A.R. Rahman talks about discovering new talent, the music of Nagaland and the scent of music. In 2003, Shahid Kapoor made his big screen debut with Ishq Wishq, a film that not only marked his entry into Bollywood but also became a musical hit and a favourite among audiences, particularly the Gen X. Now, more than two decades later, the adaptation Ishq Wishq Rebound attempts to recapture that magic and resonate with a new generation, exploring modern themes of rebound, love and friendship in the ever-evolving landscape of relationships. The film's plot revolves around Raghav, played by Rohit Sarap, and his close friends Sanya, played by Pashmina Roshan, and Sahir, played by Gibran Khan, who form the core trio of this narrative. Raghav, an aspiring filmmaker, finds himself caught between his budding romance with Rhea, played by Naila Gurewal, and his role as a mediator in Sahir and Sanya's tumultuous relationship. When Sahir and Sanya break up, Raghav's attempt to reconcile them backfires, leading to a series of events that test their friendships and reshape their dynamics. One of the film's strengths lies in its cast. Rohit Saraf's performance stands out for its impeccable comedic timing and effortless delivery, making him a captivating presence on screen. His ability to break the fourth wall adds an engaging element to his character's journey, drawing viewers into the narrative. Pashmina Roshan portrays her role with depth, effectively conveying the character's struggles and adding layer to her portrayal. Gibran Khan, known for his role as a child artist in Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gham, brings a charming presence to the screen, showcasing his talent and commitment to the character. Naila Greval also delivers a competent performance in her limited role, adding to the ensemble's chemistry. While the film's first half is engaging, showcasing Raghav's struggles to balance his friendship and romantic interest, the pace slows down in the second half. The narrative loses its grip on the premise and the complexities of the group's relationships start to feel repetitive. The film also shies away from delving deeply into serious themes, opting for a more light-hearted approach. For instance, there's a scene where Raghav, a writer, interacts with Shiva Chadda's character who introduces him to the concept of couple therapy. This moment suggests a possibility of exploring more profound topics but the film doesn't fully embrace this potential, leaving the audience with a sense of unfulfilled expectation. One noticeable aspect of the film that was a bit challenging for me was its camera work. The angles appear to be random and some of the experimental shots were not visually pleasing. For instance, in a scene where Raghav is avoiding Rhea's calls, instead of using conventional cuts, the camera spins around the frame, creating a somewhat disorienting effect. This prolonged shot might be a bit unsettling for some viewers. In conclusion, Ishkvishk Rebound is a sincere effort to resonate with the Gen Z audience and explore modern themes of love and friendship. The makers of the film director Nipun Dharmadikari and writers Vaishali Naik, Vinay Chawal and Ketan Pedgaonkar have made a sincere effort to create a charming film that resonates with the Gen Z audience. While they have put in their best foot forward, the nostalgia of Shahid Kapoor's original Ishq Vishq is somewhat compromised in the process. Unexpectedly, the charm of the original might inadvertently impact this film's reception. Nevertheless, the film is a decent attempt at adapting a beloved classic for a new generation, offering a fresh take on relationships in today's world. And here is our recommendation from the Hindi heartland. A film that made me remember Bimal Roy and his film Do Bigha Zameen. A stellar performance here by Prateek Gandhi in a geo-cinema film called Deir Bigha Zameen.
दो बीघा जमीन मोस्ट सिनेफाइल्स वुड रिमाइंड अस ऑफ विमल रॉय डायरेक्टोरियल द पॉल महेंद्र एंड ऋषिकेश मुखर्जी पेंड 1953 क्लासिक सोशल ड्रामा अनदर फिल्म कॉल्ड डेढ़ बीघा जमीन व्हिच हैज रिलीज्ड नाउ हैज अ सेम सोल एज दैट ऑफ द विमल रॉय क्लासिक एंड आई एम जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट द सोल एंड इंटेंशन इफ यू रिकॉल दो बीघा जमीन वाज बेस्ड ऑन नोबेल लॉरियट रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर्स दो बीघा जमीन आन टैगोर्स वैल्यूज टाइमलेस they surely are needed in these times too 71 years later director pulkit pays an ode to the classic with his film that's half a bigha shot almost paying respect to the masterpiece do bigha zameen now this one stars prateek gandhi and khushali kumar in leading roles and surely it's a well intentioned film with the heart in the right place dear bigha zameen tells the story of anil singh played by prateek gandhi a humble businessman from a small town in the hindi belt he's an ideal son a loving caring husband but the humble man would do anything to protect the honor of his sister neha played by prasanna bisht neha receives a good marriage proposal but the group's family is seeking a hefty dowry though immoral dowry is still a reality in many Indian households and often wrongly treated as culture in certain belt anil is pinning his hopes on selling off his property but he runs into bureaucracy with land sharks particularly local mla amar singh played by neeraj sood casting his evil eye on anil's dear bigha zameen these are testing times for the morose anil but he is determined to fight it out till his last breath this is the story of a common man struggles his resilience the undying spirit in taking on a formidable foe such tales of a commoner were once the highlight of indian cinema especially in the golden era and championed by the likes of vimal roy gurudat rishikesh mukherjee and sham benegal it is also reminiscent of french cinema that thrives on humane poignant stories from scam 2003 to do or do pyar often prati gandhi plays grey characters but this anil singh is a modicum of integrity it's difficult for a man from gujarat to ace the north indian accent so well but gandhi does so well to imbibe the common man spirit somewhere in up or mp the big surprise here is kushali kumar who shines in a humble avatar as anil's housewife farre actor prasanna bisht continues to rise up the ranks with her competent show as anil's sister neha do far from perfect dear bigha zameen helps director pulkit to redeem himself after the disappointment of bhakshak such films contribute to the serious about cinema image of the industry and are likely to bring in much needed credibility to current indian cinema i highly recommend you watch dear bigha zameen on jio cinema Now moving on earlier this year actor producer politician and ncw member khushbu sundar along with her actor filmmaker husband sundar c released aramanai 4 the fourth installment in their successful horror comedy franchise after smashing the box office in the south the dubbed hindi version was released some time ago what was the camaraderie between the two leading ladies the actresses and why is horror an evergreen genre Not too long ago I chatted with the producer Khushbu Sundar and the leading actresses Tamanna Bhatia and Rashi Khanna. Tamanna I have to say aap na pure film ke zone mein hai what are these excavations from some archaeological <laughs> site or what I'm getting a very spooky feeling here. Uh-huh. I like your dress. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. I'm wearing masaba but the idea was to actually wear a lungi. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like main <laughs> Tamil Nadu mein nahi hu to kya hua <laughs> I can channel the spirit of Tamil Nadu so I wore a, a lungiish uh, fun south indian films have always been very proud of their culture mm. and they show it off and celebrate it in their movies and they're very rooted in what they create yeah. so uh, and I also feel like the slightly more massier audiences and the massy uh, uh, people who actually consume these movies for who these movies are made um really connect when there is an emotional high mm. in the characters that they see on screen mm. so whenever i have been a part of a film where it is emotionally charged mm. it tends to people tend to connect with it in this i play a mother mm. i've never i never thought um, i would even understand what that means to play that on screen because i've never done that before but for me this was very special because it was the only inspiration that i could really take and I, it had to be a pure emotion for me 
So it came from my mother and you know the warmth that she gives me, whatever be the circumstance. Uh, so yeah, that's been channeled here in Arunama Nai form. You have been an actor for like how many years? 185 films? 200 films? 200. What a journey. <laughs> Pushpu Sundar. And then you married the leading director of Tamil cinema, uh, the director of this film too, Sundar C. Who's directed, who's acted, who's written the screenplay, story, everything. Is it a good idea to collaborate professionally with your husband? Absolutely, but you have to trust each other and understand each other. Mm -hmm. Because if the question is not very much, if it doesn't have any trust, then there are bound to be problems. So the best thing I do is, I let him be as he is. I let him work. I hardly visit uh, the location. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we were shooting for uh, this film, I came to the sets one day. Yeah. Once when, yeah, once for her, when they were shooting in Chennai and outdoor, they were shooting somewhere in Kerala. I just went for a day because it happened to our wedding anniversary. Okay. So I had to be with him. I was there exactly for a day and then I left. Mm -hmm. So I think I give him that lot of space. And I think over the years, we have learned to trust each other. The best thing about him is he's a producer's director. Mm -hmm. When he starts a film, he'll have a budget and never at any given point, not only the films which we have made, even when the films he has done for some other producers, no producer can come forward and say that my film over budget. To think big as an actor, as a creative person. Rashi, describe one scene that you did one day on that set, after which I really feel like watching. Everybody really feels like watching the film. Just narrate that day <laughs> or narrate that scene. So I have to tell you that we have a lot of great comic bits in the film. And comedy is laced very well with the horror uh, part of it. And at no point does one overlap the other. It's so perfectly balanced in the film. And I was very lucky to be able to have scenes which had a lot of comedy in it. So I get, I got to work with these amazing uh, comedy artists that we have, Sarla ma'am, we have, we have uh, uh, Yogi Babu, who's uh, one of the biggest comedians in the Tamil uh, film industry. And I think there's so much to learn from them because I personally feel that comedy is a very difficult genre it to is, act yeah. in. And um, somebody famously said, you can replicate applause. Yes. But you cannot replicate comic uh, <laughs> yes. humor. So, yes. Yeah, you're right. So that comedy timing is so important. And I personally love comedy and acting uh, uh, in, a, in a character that's comic. Um, and I've done such roles in, uh, the Telugu, in Telugu films, but not as much in uh, Tamil. But just watching them come alive with their lines and adding so much more is is an um, is a film school for me itself yeah. you know there's so much i get to learn from them so it's not like that one day that uh, you know this is that one day where i feel like oh uh, yeah. you know for me aranmanai is more than that because i was a part of aranmanai part 3 hey, so yeah, i saw um, i saw how sundar sir works in fact i didn't even uh, read the script I, I didn't get any script for aranmanai 4 he just called me and he said i'm making aranmanai 4 and i was like yeah. sir i'm on board <laughs> because i remember I, I, I mean even tamanna because she's worked with him i'm sure she had that belief that you know he yeah. will write good women parts because that's what he's known for also and yeah. we have very few filmmakers like that so for me it was more of more of living that experience with him making that film with such people where i'm also getting to learn so much and of course there are these horror elements which are not like on your face where you get very scared yes. and that's why probably families are going with their yeah. kids to watch it so there's not that one scene that i would say that you know this is when i felt i was like for me it's like the whole film describe a few days working together how did you rub off on each other how much did you learn from each other what was that camaraderie like so actually, we have not film the screen space share nahi ki hai. Except, except for the song that except. you saw. Okay. Uh, and, but I don't know this, I am saying it without asking. But I think it's not what they asked me about my part, nor what I asked about their part. Hmm. Nahin, maine inka part kya hai, hmm. Comes from two reasons. One, both of us have worked with Sundar Si, sir. Hmm. And we know he, as a human being, has so much respect for women. And whenever he writes parts for women, he writes them strong, he writes them well, he writes them with gravitas. And what I like even more is that this is served to a commercial audience. If you want to make anything reach out uh, strongly, it should be made palatable to everybody. That's when it reaches out the hardest, right? Um, and I know Rashi from before actually, because we did a film, we did a Telugu film before together where we, you know, where we had scenes together and we've We've known each other for a while. Mm -hmm. I truly believe she is one of the most secure actresses I have seen in the industry. And that comes because of the confidence she has on her craft and also because she is a really evolved person. Uh, I'm, it's, it's not every day. See, even in women, women are not 
uh, any uh, we're not some other creature we're also human feeling insecure feeling jealous feeling uh, competitive are complete human emotions but whenever i've worked with rashi i have only felt that she's trying to just give the best shot yeah. and it's so nice to work with people like that you know that they bring their 200% if it's my take she has to give me a cue mm. she's going to act as much as she was acting in her close up right now this is a rare quality yeah. this doesn't happen every day but i worked with her before and i have memories of that yeah. so that's the kind of actor performer she is and even when we were dancing mm. you know if i wasn't happy with something she'd be like no we're doing one more so it is yeah. i think if it, women truly have to uh, look out for each other yes. that is when i feel like that is camaraderie where you're just supporting each other to do your best mm. versus become a hurdle in in your in each other's path you're also a woman you're also a member of the national commission for women you're also a member of a political party and now when you make a creative project i'm sure people must be expecting so much more from you creative world is completely different it's larger than life mm -hmm. uh so i don't think people should even come just because i happen to be from a political party or just because i happen to be a national commission of women a member mm -hmm. does not mean that i have to show all my uh work into my films mm. my film is an entertainment world it's larger than life so mm. you have to project differently like in this film the kind of character rashi and tamana have done mm. it's a very homely character both mm. of them have very strong roles mm. but then we of course we have one fantastic number with both of them which is yeah. a chart buster so yeah. you need that glamour part and when yeah. we have two glamorous girls who are brilliant dancers why wouldn't i cash on that So I have for the front benches. My movie is from the front bencher to the last benches. Thank you so much, guys, Thank and you. all the Thank best you. for this, that, and everything Thank that is going so to come your way. Thank, Thank you so much, Thank Apita. You. It's time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we have an enchanting conversation with the Mozart of Madras, A. R. Rahman. Welcome back to Now Showing. I'm Atika Faruqi. AR Rahman recently launched the season 3 of Nexa Music and this time the focus will be on the vernacular music. And up next we have AR Rahman in conversation with my colleague Vishal Chatkara talking about creating songs for Chamkeela and the music of Nagaland. Rahman sir, Nexa Music is a platform that offers opportunities to aspiring singers. What's in the store for the season three of Nexa Music? So, first season and second season were actually focused on indie English songs. I think season three opens it up to different languages of India and uh, different styles. So, I think this is going to be a very very exciting season for Nexa. So, which are some of the singers that have impressed you from the previous seasons? From the previous season, I think uh, there are many people like Nisha Shetty. She came in and she's part of my shows. And then um, you know, there's also a couple of songwriters from Nagaland, and Nagaland is a you know untapped treasure. <laughs> Talking about the Nagaland, first congratulations! You recently unveiled the poster, poster. Uh, of your the documentary that you produced. The documentary is called Head Hunting to Win Boxing. Please tell us about the response that you had at the Cannes, and what can we expect from the songs of of the film? So, I personally felt like it's such a great story for humanity. You know, where the history of violence and just for protection, all that stuff is there, and there's a community which has moved away from that, and they're leading the younger generation to art, music, and it's a great story for the whole world, not just for India. And in India, you know, you always hear about, uh, oh, Nagaland is a very dangerous place. You know, when I was young. I only heard the stuff. Suddenly you go there, it's changed completely. The Hornbill Festival. It, it looked like a place where I want to be forever. You know, the the nature, the people, so loving, and you know, and so I felt like I called uh, Rohit from you know Creative Indians and said, "Hey, just come in with your camera." He comes in and he starts shoots, and then it was almost four to five years. Then COVID came, but uh, when we released the poster, there was so much of excitement. People are like taking a. Photograph of the phone, the poster from my phone oh. and from my iPad, and it had some kind of a. I can we can see the energy. There is a reggae band, and there are a lot of DJs there. There's a classical music conservatory which have set up there for the. We adopted an orphanage, and uh, so those kids are playing strings now. We'll slowly move into brass and form an orchestra there. 
So it's all good, good stuff. Staying with this theme, then you know you actually dimmed the lights of your studio while working mm-hmm. on the song Vida Karo, and you decided to light some candles. I actually wanted an experience that time because we felt like very rarely we get to compose something very serene and beautiful. So and Imtiaz had liked the mukra of the thing, so I said, why don't we extend the song? The song actually kept evolving. We had um, a love song, similar tune, and a sad song. So Vidakaro was done, and I said, let's do a rantra. And then for doing the rantra, we just were chilling out. There was a big classroom with a piano. I said, let's dim the lights, and we were jamming. And then after that, I felt like uh, you saw Chamkila and Amar Jodh both dead. Why can't she have a voice? Then that antra of Janita was added. So it was a process where we just kept adding. Which are the other songs for which you had this sensory experience? They like probably you added a fragrance to the room. There's always good fragrance. I think I believe that smell is very, very important. That's one of the reasons why Lemask is also based on scent and everything. My mom used to put dhoop when she was alive. My my wife, she gets all kinds of incenses and she makes sure that the whole place sense, you know, smells very good. But does it help you? Well, in it place? does. Yeah. It does subliminally. It changes the way you, you know, good smell and bad smell. There's such a difference. So, in which fragrance inspired which song from Highway? Or no, every. I think mostly you now everybody's tuned. Everybody's oriented to have a good smell in the studio. Then people come in. There's oud. There is uh, agarbatti smell. There is uh, musk. Sometimes there is rose. You know, actors have their perfume for the characters. Yeah. So I think Yaraman has fragrances for them, the kind of music they want to create. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. I think so for a peppy song, you have a different fragrance. No, no, no. <laughs> Do you also like singers to learn the song when they go behind the mic? Like they should remember the lyrics. Or do you like them to have a sheet in front of them? It depends. I mean, sometimes you're forced because some shooting happens and so they come and sing line by line, we punch and do. I mean, nowadays, what I'm uh, recently... I'm, done a song with Anuradha Parvalji. So I called her one day before because I love her voice. So I gave the song and then she came the next day and she sang. Do you remember the lyrics when you sing? When your songs? I I'm I don't want to remember anything. My thing is if I remember, I feel like my mind will be filled with the all the old stuff. So I usually have something in front of me and I sing. Some of the songs I can remember. But when I sing Hindi or Telugu or whatever, Punjabi, uh, Tamil is my mother tongue. All the rest of the stuff is like going through a transformation. <laughs> and tha, and ka, ka, all the stuff comes in. But I, pronunciation, I, because I learned a bit of Urdu also, so I, I can understand. So then, you know, we, I often ask singers, how much time do they take to get, get friendly with the tune? How much time then Aramant takes? I, unfortunately, I'm, uh, very few songs I learn and sing because I'm sometimes composing on the go. So I, I do like jamming of, you know, 15 minutes and I chop from that and sometimes re-sing something, sometimes I just put it together. And that's one of the reasons why I don't sing much because I want to be the other end getting great performances from people here. Akbar ne Birbal se kaha ki mere haath mein kuch aisa likho कि जब मैं खुश हूं तो मैं दुखी हो जाऊं और जब दुखी हूं तो खुश हो जाऊं तो बीरबल ने लिखा दिस टू शैल पास बुल्ले शाह ने इसको अपने अंदाज में कहा है दुश्मन मरे तो खुशी ना करिए सजना भी मर जाना समटाइम्स आई फील बिविल्डर्ड बाय द ट्रांजिएंट क्वालिटी ऑफ एवरी फेज इन लाइफ हेंस ट्राई टू लिव इन द प्रेजेंट आई विल सी यू टुमारो टिल देन Keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs>